every computer program needs to have some way of storing values that it can work with. And the way to do this is to use variables. Now you can see an example here. This is one of the sample projects uh, called VARS, the VARS project. I've already defined uh, a simple user interface here. And you can see, let's have a look what happens when these buttons are clicked. So this one runs this code in this procedure here. And it adds one to i, and then it calls show values. Show values is this up here, and it just displays the value of i and another uh, variable called x. Now let's have a look what, what i and x are. These are variables. These are identifiers. I can refer to them in my code by the name I give them. I've called them just i and x for simplicity here, but we look at um, more descriptive ways of naming variables shortly. The variables are declared following the var keyword. This is a Pascal convention. You have to have the variables declared following var. Then you put a name for a variable. You can call it more or less whatever you like. I've explained the actual restrictions on names uh, in the course text in the book that you can download. And alongside, I've put the data type. And the data type follows a colon. So it's variable name, colon, data type. And then I have to end the declaration with a semicolon. So I've got something called i, and I've got something called x. And they're both of type integer, that is, whole numbers. Now, when my code executes down here, the code I just showed you, this adds 1 to i. So what this code says is evaluate the expression on the right. That's i plus 1 and then assign it to the value of i. So if I've got i, a variable called i, and it starts off with a value 0, and in fact I've initialized both these variables, when the form is first created, that's my user interface, is first created, this code runs, and I've given both my variables the default value 0. So the first time this executes up here, i is worth 0. The code on the right, the expression on the right, says take i, the value of i, and add 1 to it. So that now gives me a value of 1. And then it says assign this new value back to the variable i. So at the end of that, i is equal to 1. Now the next time the code executes, if I click the button a second time, i is now equal to 1. So when the code on the right executes, it adds 1 to i i is now equal to 2, and it is assigned back to the variable i. So this operator here, colon equals, in Pascal, that is the assignment operator. That says get the value on the right and put that value into the variable on the left. So you can think of a variable as like a labeled box. It's a box of a certain sort. It can contain the type of data that it's been declared uh, in the variable section to be able to hold. That's integer here. So the label on the box stays the same, but its value changes. And I'll explain that in the next program. Now this is the next sample program. It's called cache. And if you look at the form here, I have buttons to add or subtract values from, in theory, something called petty cash, something called entertainment's budget, and fewer money. Now, let's have a look how I've implemented this. So here are my variables, again, following the var keyword. This time, this is an optional way of declaring variables of the same type in Pascal. I've put commas between a list of variables, then a colon, then the type. So that means all these four variables are of the integer type, then a semicolon. Now, because I've declared the variables up here at the top of this code unit, they are visible down in the procedures that follow it. That's called the, the scope, the, the visibility of, of variables is referred to as the variable scope. And I'll explain that later in this course. But for now, just bear in mind that all the procedures down here have access to the variables I've declared up here. Now. In this case, I've given the variables more meaningful names. 
it's not really a very good idea in a more complex program to have variables with short names, as I used before, i and x in the previous program. I want to see immediately what these variables, what the values that they hold, represent. And so I've given them some names that I can understand. Petty cash, entertainment's budget, fuel money and wallet. So in theory, what this program does is it maintains a sort of a simple um, cash database of the money that I have available. I say that the money that I have to spend is in wallet and the other uh, variables hold money that is in principle in petty cash, my entertainment's budget or my fuel money. And again, that gets back to the idea of having variables as labelled containers. The labels stay the same, but the values, just like a labelled box, the values change as you put uh, money into or out of the box, or in this case, integers are added or subtracted from the variables. Now I've got a memo, a simple uh, text box in the main part of the form up here. And when cash is put in or out of these uh, theoretical boxes, my variables, I just convert the integer to a string because remember I can only d display a string, that's text, in a memo. So I have to use this int to str function which is pre-declared for me uh, in, in the Pascal library to convert the integers into a displayable form as a string. So let's see what happens. When form is created, I assign default values. I give myself 10, that could be $10 in principle, or 10 pounds, or euros, whatever the currency is. In petty cash, 10 in entertainment's budget, 10 in fuel money, and nothing in wallet. Now, when I click each of these buttons, I take one from petty cash, that takes me to this method up here. All I do is I subtract one from the value of the petty cash variable and then assign the new value back to petty cash. So if petty cash had 10, I subtract 1, it's now 9, and I assign that value back to the variable. And I add 1 into the wallet. I've taken 1 out of petty cash and I've given that 1 to wallet. So the wallet variable is now wallet plus 1 and that's been assigned back to the wallet variable. So that should now, if it started as 0, that should now be 1. And then I call show values to uh, display the results. So the easiest way to, to see how this works is to try it out, look at the code, uh, compile it, and just try it out. So you can see these are my default values, the ones I've set up at the beginning of the program. When I subtract one from petty cash, the values are updated. Petty cash, the variable is now uh, has a value of 9. Wallet, that's had one added to it, so it's got a value of 1. If I add one to petty cash, Wallet has one subtracted, it's now zero. Petty cash is 10. And the same with all the other buttons. So